I'd like to welcome you to our final presentation of the day. Uh, Nikki Smith will be presenting, talking, discussing Google Earth Pro and Sanborn Maps and their use in your research, uh, family history research. And we'll turn the time over to Nikki. Hello, my name is Nikki Smith, and I am a, an accredited genealogist professional. I'm accredited in the United States Great Lakes region, and I serve as a service missionary here at the BYU Family History Library twice a week. And I'm really excited to share this case study with you. Have you ever woken in the middle of the night with an inkling of something that someone has told you or something you had researched in the past and you can't remember? That happened to me a little a few months ago when I woke with the thought of, when, you know, the question of when did my great grandparents move to Spanish Fork? And what did he do while he lived here in Spanish Fork? Now, incredibly, I remembered that wisp of a question the next morning. This is Charles Edward Hayward and Martha Annis Hepworth, his wife. They were my great grandparents and they were married in 1894 in Salt Lake City. They had 13 children, 12 of whom lived to adulthood. I knew that Charles worked as a mail carrier when they were first married and that he had a truck farm in Bountiful, Utah in the early 1900s. Truck farming is growing fruits and vegetables on a small farm and selling the surplus to the public. Unfortunately, it has nothing to do with growing auto parts. The family farm suffered a devastating flash flood in about 1916 that made the farm almost completely unusable for farming. The first step in any successful research is to decide what you'd like to know and then to craft a research question or research objective. My original research objective was Charles Edward Hayward, born 1864 and died 1933, lived with his wife, Martha Annis Hepworth Hayward and their children in Bountiful, Utah in the early 1900s. When did the, fam when did the couple move their family to Spanish Fork, Utah? Excuse me, and what was Charles's occupation here in Spanish Fork? I have a simple framework to help me create a successful research plan. First, write down what you remember. Second, gather information from your home and review previous research. And then three, decide what types of records may help you answer that question. When you write down what you remember, it doesn't have to be correct. The simple fact of brainstorming what you can remember helps spark the creativity that will help you through the research process. I remembered that Charles and Annis's last child, Louise, was born about 1919 in Bountiful, Utah, and that Charles's son, Charles and Annis's son, Sidney H. Hayward, my grandfather, graduated from Spanish Fork High School in 1927 or 28. Notice how I don't have exact things, and I'm thinking of, that Louise was born in about 1919. Next, gather sources from your home and review your previous research. You may have things filed on genealogical software files like Roots Magic or paper family group records. I found a short life sketch of Charles and Annis written by Annis in the 1960s. I also found a short life sketch written by my grandmother about my, my grandfather's life and that was written in the 1980s, about 15 years after his death. I also found that I had a copy of Charles's 1933 obituary published in an American Fork newspaper. So what did all these sources tell me? My Roots Magic file told me that Ray married in 1924 in Spanish Fork. Now that doesn't mean that the whole family was here in Spanish Fork in 1924, but it does mean that the family did have some connection here. Annis's history told me that my great-grandfather, Charles, learned mattress making and upholstery making in San Francisco, California, between the ages of 15 and 19. 
It also said that he worked in Salt Lake City in upholstery after the flood that destroyed their farm. The obituary said that, that Charles operated an auto top and upholstering business in Spanish work. The history about my grandfather that was written by my grandmother said that the Haywards had come to Spanish work in the summer of 1922 and that Charles opened a shop in Spanish Fork making upholstery, auto top, and side curtains. Well, that kind of answered my initial research objective. The Haywards moved to Spanish Fork in the summer of 1922, and Charles opened an auto top mattress and upholstery shop. But now I have so many more questions. Like auto tops, what are auto tops? What are side curtains? Charles owned his own shop. And most important, the biggest question on my mind was, where was Charles's shop in Spanish work? So I revised my research objective slightly to help me better focus on the research. Charles E. Hayward probably moved his family to Spanish work, Utah, where he opened an auto top mattress and upholstery business in 1922. Where in Spanish Fork, Utah, was Charles's business located? I'm not sure why that one's there. That one's not in the right spot. <laughs> so what type of um, records may answer our question? My question. I can talk to living relatives. I can look at the life sketches of the other 11 Hayward children. I can consult city directories and newspapers. I can use the Sanborn Fire insurance maps, and I can use Google and other search engines to answer basic questions. I reached out to my father, but he couldn't tell me where the Hayward and Sons was located. As for Google, it did answer one of the questions about auto tops and side curtains. You can see a photo here. All open Ford vehicles came equipped with a top cover and side curtains. These would need to be repaired and replaced as they aged and weathered. In 1928, Ford and other automakers began introducing vehicles which had fully enclosed cabs and the need for auto tops and side curtains soon dissipated. City directories are an amazing research. Beyond research tool. Beyond names and references, city directories can provide employment information and in information about churches, social clubs, and businesses in the community. Ancestry has a large collection of U.S. city directories. With a population of just over 5,000, Spanish Fork was too small to have a city directory slowly, excuse me, slowly de devoted to it. And so like many small communities, Spanish work was covered in a countywide directory under the title of a larger urban area. In this case, Provo City Directory. Four directories may have answered some of my questions. A Provo directory is available for 1924, 1926, 1929, and 1930. I found reference to Hayward and Sons in the 1926 directory, but no mention of any Haywards in the 1924 directory. And the 1926 directory didn't mention Charles at all. It listed a Frank H. Hayward and an M. A. Hayward as being associated with, with Hayward and Sons. Um, Hayward and Sons was also listed in the, the business directory of the Provo City Directory under auto tops and trimmers. Trimmers is actually another term for one who upholsters items. After a few minutes of confusion, I realized that whoever had gathered the information for the city directory was referring to Martha Annis Hayward, M.A. Hayward, instead of Charles E. Hayward. It's important to remember that city directories were published very early in the year using information gathered the previous year. 
So although Hayward and Son was included in the 1926 Provo Directory, they were in business as early as late 1925. In 1929 and 1930, there was no mention of Hayward and Sons. Charles was listed as the manager of a Falls mattress and upholstery company. Newspapers contain information about the day-to-day -day lives of its subscribers and the local citizens. They provide a link to a look into life within the community, whether it is a citywide debate about where to locate a city swimming pool or the local prize hound dog having pups. It may all be there in glorious black and white. We're really lucky here in, in Utah to have the Utah Digital Newspapers, which is a fabulous free resource for newspapers in Utah. Many other states have similar websites and the United States Library of Congress has the, I just lost it, Chronicling America. A website that can provide more images. The Utah Digital Newspaper has images of issues from Spanish Fort Press from 1902 to 1930. The Spanish Fort Press was continued well into the 2000s, but due to copyright, Utah Digital Newspapers only has up to 1930. So this is what I found. A printed advertisement began appearing in early 1923. Auto tops, repairing and upholstering, furniture repaired and ref refinished, opposite William Gar Williams Garage, Hayward and Sons. In the mid, mid 1925, they tried one larger ad and then immediately went to advertising in the classified sections. This was probably, this probably made good business sense. A classified ad was likely less expensive than the printed ads. The Haywards continued to advertise from 1923 until 1929, almost weekly. In 1927, Charles's business is advertised as being next to the telephone office. And in 1927, it was near the telephone office. And in 1929, it was a, located a half a block east of the Commercial Bank. The Commercial Bank was on Main Street in Spanish Fork, so Charles had moved the business from Main Street at that time. This indicates that I'm looking for at least two, maybe three different locations. The Sanborn Fire Insurance Map Company was founded in the mid-1860s. The company created detailed maps of urban areas. Insurance companies purchased these maps to help determine the fire risk and amount of insurance premiums for a business or a homeowner. There were several fire insurance map companies throughout the United States, most of them later consolidated under the Sanborn name. The Sanborn collection in the Library of Congress covers over 12,000 cities and towns in the United States. Canada, Mexico, and even Cuba. It includes about 50,000 editions of these fire insurance maps, and those comprise of 700, more than 700,000 individual map sheets. These maps were mostly in urban areas and business districts of each town. And the covers are becoming at, quite prized for the beautiful lithographs that each um, office created for them. Most of the Sanborn maps were fairly standardized in size and the symbols used as the employees worked from wax templates. Sanborn employed 100 to 300 individuals at a time to do the field work. And quite funny, Funny is that many of the employees were detained during the First and Second World War as suspected spies. They also got in trouble with smugglers during the um, prohibition when they were detailing what was along a, uh, in a harbor or along a seashore. This is a legend detailing the symbols that each Sanborn map uses. 
Normally, Sanborn maps do not list the business name, just a description of the business. However, if the business was large enough and there was room on the map, the map maker may choose to include the name, like Consolid Wagon and Machine Company, ran by J.M. Career in Spanish Fork. The map included the number of stories each building had. It included the addresses of each business, the height of each building roof, the location of water and stove pipes. It even included where the windows were located and on which story they were located. If you notice, this has two slashes on it. So this window was located on the second story of this particular building. It also included these funky little symbols here that told how far above the actual roof did the fire the firewall, how far it rose above the roof. So there is a ton of information, as well as each one of these colors indicate a different type of building material. Although we can access this fire, the Sanborn Fire Insurance maps on the Library of Congress, the library does not have all of the maps available digitally due to copyright issues, or they simply don't have that particular edition. You can look at universities and public libraries to find out if they have the editions that you're looking for. The University of Utah's Reconstruction, Reconstructing the Past Through Utah Sanborn Fire Maps is a fabulous resource for Utah Sanborn Maps. All known maps for Utah are available here and uniquely these maps can be used as a geo-referenced overlay in Google Earth. And we begin to access those by using the, choosing the name of the city on the left-hand sidebar. Sanborn published three editions of Spanish Fork maps, 1890, 1908, and 1925. We'll be working with the 1925 edition, but it is really fun to see the change in the city over time. You can download individual high quality JPEGs of each map sheet here. You can download all the georeferenced maps, map sheets for the city in one shot by clicking on the photo, or you can download individual georeferenced sheets clicking this second option. If you have Google Earth installed onto your desktop, the files appear in your download section looking like this. Google Earth Pro is the Google Map desktop application or Google Maps. Um, it can be downloaded and used freely. And I believe it's being revised and it may be obsolete in about 18 to 24 months when Google rolls it into a new online version of Google Maps. Now, I'm not as hopeful at, for this next section because I'm going to try and open, stop sharing this and open up my Google Earth so we can play with it for a minute. It's really quite fun to watch this. This is the, if we back up, this is all the sheets together of the 1925 edition of the Sanborn Maps for Spanish Fork. And if we fly down, we can find the only, one more second, where did it go? There we go. The only auto top works and mattress factory listed in Spanish work in the 1925 edition. Now, one of the things, um, disadvantage of having all the maps overlaid together is that you can 
not necessarily, you can't necessarily see everything. If we come down just a little bit, you can see that the border on this top sheet covers up these other stores. So I have downloaded just the individual sheet and we're just going to pop out. So now you can see how it, it's just the individual sheet. We're gonna go back down into it. So I can see here that the address is 242 and I know that we're on North Main Street. It's next to a bicycle shop, a paint and wallpaper shop, and a, a large off a large garage. Now it's not opposite a garage, Williams Garage, like it said. And so, but it is near a garage. So that's close enough for me. You can actually make your own overlays and the instructions for that. I was gonna show you a really cool overlay and it didn't work, so. But let's get back to this. We do know that by highlighting, you can increase the opacity and decrease the opacity. And so you can see what's underneath. You can also mark different things. In the 1927 and 29, 1930 newspaper, we know that this Hayward and Sons is located a block, a half a block east from a bank. Well, there are two banks in Spanish Fork in 1925 listed. One is here on Main Street and then one is on the corner. It also says that it is next to a telephone office. So if we come in, there's a telephone office, and in 1925, it had a vacant building next to it. And we can pull the opacity down to see. What's there now? This telephone office, I actually remember getting soda from it from, for some reason when I was a child. It's now a uh, uh, part of the city chamber, Spanish Work City Chamber build it, um, offices. Okay, so we're gonna jump back to, so let's keep, look a little bit closer at the Auto Top Workshop. We know that from the map, we can tell that it's the only auto top or mattress business in Spanish Fork in 1925. The address is 242 North Main Street in Spanish Fork, Utah. The numbers on Main Street have since been reallocated and 242 North Main does no longer exists. The building was one story wood frame building clad in metal. And we can tell that because it's yellow here and it has this great outline. And you can tell that, um, and that's shown in the, the legend that I showed earlier. You can also see it's one story right here. It's only 10 feet tall for the entire roof, is only 10 feet tall. And then it has some type of division in it and a stovepipe right here in the front. The paint and the paint and wallpaper shop is a, a cinder block building. And these pink mean that they are various types of brick buildings. And like I said, it's near a garage. So if we use Google Maps, we can get a street view. And this is about where the mattress, Hayward and Sons mattress and upholstery was. I actually remember these two buildings being built, but I have no recollection whatsoever of what was there before. For the smaller building, for the, the next building, 
this is where the tele Spanish work telephone office was. And this was probably where the Falls Mattress Company was. I've always been fascinated with historic photos of Spanish work and I collect as many as I can possibly get. Also, as a genealogist, I randomly search digital collections, image by images for fun. Yes, for fun. I entered Spanish work in the BYU digital collections and I was working my way through the collections looking for unidentif unidentified photos of my family when I came across a photo. This is a photo of Spanish Fork Ford Motor Company, and it was taken in the late 1920s or early 1930s. I was immediately intrigued, not only because I had never seen the photo, but the auto shop with the large auto garage behind was located next to a paint store. Let's just remind ourselves, auto supply with an office, check. A paint and wallpaper store, check. And auto top works, check. This is definitely the right location. We can draw it out roughly. And so roughly, this is how Main Street would have looked in a very childish way. The Pearson and Thar Peterson and Tharston's Bicycle Shop, Hayward and Sons Mattress and Upholstery and Auto Top Works, Evans Paint Store, and the Spanish Fork Ford Motor Company. Now, if we zoom in to the right-hand side of the photo, we can see a metal-clad building with no visible windows on the side, and it is a very short building, and I am almost positive that this is the building where Hayward and Sons auto top mattresses and upholstery was located. So very close. I just really want to go back in time and ask the photographer to take just a little bit wider shot. The final piece of advice after your research is complete, please share what you find with your family. After I had written up the research and shared it with my dad and his siblings, my aunts and uncles, my sweet aunt Jackie sent me this photo, these photos. Far in the depths of her basement storage room, she had one of Charles Edward Hayward's upholstery tools. She had never thought much about it, but she printed a copy of the newspaper advertisement and created an address marker for the front of her home so that she could tell everyone about her grandfather and his business in Spanish work. All in all, this was a very successful research project. I will continue to look for photos of the east side of Spanish work Main Street and photos of the telephone office in the hopes of seeing a full photo of the building and buildings that my grandfather may have ran his business in. I hope that this gives you some ideas and some new sources to look at to solve your own family mystery. Thank you, everyone.